I'm Oliver Gilbert. I gotta confess something. Can I do that with you all? Can we just share a secret? Okay, th this is my secret. When they said this was a solo talk, I thought it was a room with me and six people. I'm real happy to see all y'all this morning, but I did not expect this. Um, I see my colleague, my predecessor as president of the African American Mayors, uh, Tony Harp. Tony, wave to the people. She's right here. I know that Mayor Hardy James is, Hardy, Hardy Davis, Hardy back there from Augusta. He's the vice president of the organization. And if any of you all are from, uh, I know Mayor Johnson is here also. Mayor Johnson, where are you? He's, he's here. Hey, how you doing? And you all have an extraordinary mayor here in Kansas City, Mayor Sly James. Um, so I'm not just saying that because he wears bow ties also. I'm saying it because he's really someone that we can look up to nationally as being a trendsetter and a best practices setter and someone who's willing to not just reach out, do things in his city, but reach out and help people across the country. And we need more of that. Uh, you can't see this, but they're just, there's this clock right here. And they said that I have six minutes. And when they told me I have six minutes, I told them that my father was a Baptist pastor. <laughs> my mom was a Seventh-day Adventist teacher. So I was in church every Saturday and Sunday. So I got the whole weekend. Um, we, we can do this. It, th this is interesting because on the plane, in, I got in like maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, and I left my notes on the plane. But I, I had four things that I wanted to talk to you all about. This is four simple things, so it shouldn't take that long. Uh, the four things are a young lady named Maria Ponte. She's an artist. A, a young man who used to be the assistant parks director of my city who likes to eat a lot of food and tell a lot of stories. An abandoned park, Risco Park, and my socks. They said talk about creating an ecosystem, and this is what I'm going to talk to you about. The reason why is Maria Ponte is a 26-year-old artist who found art late in life, but she's not a regular artist. She's the person who sees something and says that she wants to make them into clothes. So she taught herself how to sew. She taught herself how to sew, and she wasn't getting much attention. And so she, she knocked on my door. I'm the mayor of her city. And she said, Mayor, I see you in suits all the time. Can I use you as my billboard? Can I actually sit down and talk with you and figure out exactly what it is about you that you want to communicate through your clothes? And can we do a fashion show? And so me, I said, well, yeah, sure. I have to wear suits all the time. I want suits that show off my personality, but also I think are, are, won't, won't actually be too offsetting to business environments. And so she came up with suits that were kind of thin, but not because I can't do the Italian style. I'm, I'm bigger than that. But, but then they had all these cute little buttons and hidden pockets and bright colors because we don't have to be afraid of those things. But that was her exercising her vision and us creating an opportunity for her to show the world how talented she is. She put me in a fashion show, and then people started asking her to design stuff. That, that's kind of what entrepreneurship looks like for her. Starrick Smith. Starrick Smith was the assistant parks director for the city of Miami Gardens, my hometown, 113,000 people, home of Super Bowl 2020, and Jazz in the Gardens, which is March uh, 8th. Yeah, you all got to clap for Miami Gardens. And this is officially the portion where I do the, the shameless plug. You know, we're going we're to host the Super Bowl in 2020, so I got to tell you about it. Uh, and, and Jazz in the Gardens is coming March you know, 8th, 9th, and 10th next year. You got to come to that. It's 50,000 people. But, but Starx was our assistant parks director. He's our assistant parks director, and all he would do all day is eat and tell stories. And so he comes to my office one day and says, what do you think I should do long term? And I said, I think, well, you like eating and you like telling stories, so you should eat and tell stories. <laughs> and, and so he actually resigns and he says, Mayor, I'm going to eat and tell stories. And so he created a brand. The brand's called The Hungry Black Man. The Hungry Black Man, and he told me, and I was like, well, that just sounds silly, Star X. But if you want my help, I'll help you. How can I help you? He said, I'm just going to go around the restaurants, and I'm going to eat their food, and I'm going to tell people about it. I'm going to create an ecosystem for black entrepreneurs, black restaurateurs. 
in South Florida, and then I'm going to go to Detroit, and then I'm going to go to Chicago, and then I'm going to go to West Palm Beach, and then I'm going to go to Houston. And uh, around 30,000 followers of his blog later, he has a brand that's being sponsored by national sponsors. Oh. It, the next thing is Risco Park. Now, if you, 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 how many of you all have been to Miami Gardens? Maybe, probably. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Oh, we got, look at Miami Gardens in the house. Okay. Um, it, there's this park. It's called Risco Park. When I was a kid, they played football in the park. And it was actually a piece of land that was actually owned by the school board. And so it's overgrown, and, and the baseball field is gone. The football field, you can't see the lines. The goalpost, one of them's down. And somebody said they want to bring back the football field. They want to bring back the football program. And I said that we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is plant seeds. And they said, you want to put a garden where the football field was? And I said, no. I want to create geniuses where the football field was. So, so what we're going to do is, on that football field, we're going to build a science, technology, engineering, mathematics facility for kids to come to after school. We're going to have a maker space for children to experiment with. This is the thing. Sometimes we think our greatness just happened. As America, it really didn't. We invested in imagination. Because ima imagination and opportunity equals innovation, which actually is the, the, that gives birth to entrepreneurship. Oh, that says all zeros. I'm out of time. But, but, but let me finish. <laughs> so, so we want to give kids the opportunity. Look, they're going to dream the dreams that we expose them to. And so in, in, in an urban area, a kid will always have football and basketball. But I want them to have robotics. I want them to have coding. I want them to be able to take their imagination and create innovation and become the entrepreneurs for America for tomorrow. We can't ever stop doing that. If we stop doing that, we kill the system. So when I say we're going to plant seeds, what I'm saying is we're going to invest in children, invest in them all the time, often. We're going to give them the opportunity to be greater than we are. I don't want a kid. Look, when I was a kid, they said, you can be a lawyer or a doctor. And so I became a lawyer because I'm not good at math, science. I'm just not good at it. I became a lawyer. But I, don't want, I want a kid to be a designer or a painter or a coder or, or a graphic designer or, or a medical you know, engineer, anything. They ought to have that opportunity. Investing and giving them the ability to have that opportunity was worth the $60 million my city put behind a, redoing our entire park system so that we could transform open space into, into opportunities for kids throughout the entire city. Those are the three points. And the last point are my socks. And socks, socks are interesting, right? So I, I wear socks, and I go to speak to all my schools in the city, and I talk to kids all the time about my socks. They always ask me, why don't your socks match? They don't match. They don't match anything. They probably don't match the suit. They don't match each other. They match nothing. And so I asked this question. I said, what are socks supposed to do? What's their function? And someone will say, you know, keep your feet warm. Somebody said one time, it stops your shoes from getting stinky. And, and, and so I asked them a question. Then why do they have to match each other? And why do they have to match your clothes? And the room is always just this silent. I, I make that point because sometimes we walk into what we think something's going to look like. What we think it should look like. And we judge it based on that. We don't realize we're doing it, but we are. Look, your socks don't have to match. They don't have to match anything. Ecos, entrepreneurs don't have to look like the entrepreneur of yesterday. It doesn't have to look like somebody who's setting up a bakery. It doesn't have to look like somebody who has a storefront. It can look 
like a young lady who's 26 years old and teaches herself to sew. A black guy who went to school for public administration but likes to eat and talk. A park that was overgrown, that we're gonna put STEM and STEAM and robotics and everything on for kids. It's gonna look different. We have to be open to that. My socks don't match. And entrepreneurship doesn't look like it used to. Thank you all very much.